you go. All right, awesome, awesome, awesome. What is going on? I am Academy Familia. We want to welcome you to today's Chairman Mentorship Call. Um, I hope that right now, wherever it is that you're at in the world, you guys are healthy, you guys are safe, you guys are spending time with your loved ones, and you guys are absolutely thriving during this time. We're in a crazy time right now um, with everything that's going on in the world. And, you know, truth be told, guys, I'm just grateful to have such a slice of paradise, a, a slice of tranquility, a slice of empowerment here on this call today, right? Um, so we're super, super, super humble to have you guys on this call. Um, and, uh, you know, for those of you guys that don't know me, my name is Matt Rosa. I'm a chairman 500 here within I Am Master Academy. Um, I've been with the company now since November of 2015. Um, and man, this thing has completely changed my entire life. Um, for those of you guys that are just getting started with the company um, and you don't know anything about the success stories inside of this or the leadership inside of this, well, we welcome you to the family. We welcome you to this financial revolution. And today's call is really focused on helping elevate the leadership inside of the organization here within I Am Mastery Academy, right? Because um, our goal here is to empower, enrich, and educate the lives of 1 million customers all around the world, to create over a thousand chairman tens and above by December of this year. And in order to do so, it's gonna take an insane amount of leadership. But just because of what's taught on this call, has to do with the business, it doesn't mean that it has to stay just for the business. You see, this is information that I strongly suggest you implement in all areas of life because how you do anything ultimately is how it is that you do everything. And in today's day and age, today's world, what's going on out there right now, leaders are needed more now than ever. And it's going to be from this organization that I truly believe people will rise and make true impacts all around the globe on a scale that is not measurable by monetary things like money and success and ranks. Um, and I really, really believe that the information taken from this call, um, if implemented and utilized uh, in a day to day basis, um, can really, really cause shift and shift does happen, right? Shift happens right um so with that being said guys i'm gonna ask uh two things of you guys two things of you guys the first thing i'm gonna ask is that you guys make sure that you guys are taking notes um simply put it's a proven fact you're gonna forget the vast majority of what it is that you learn on here if you don't write this thing down uh, it's actually a proven fact that you only retain five percent of what it is that you learn if you don't write this thing down or have somewhere to uh, go back to um and and and, and reference uh, the second thing that i'm gonna ask you guys is that you teach uh, people in and outside of the organization, what it is that you're going to learn specifically inside though, uh, because if you are on this call, the chairman mentorship calls, you are looking to go chairman, right? And in order to go chairman, guys, truth be told, it's not about what it is that you can do. You could be the most talented individual in the industry, but if you're not able to teach what it is that you know, it's not duplicatable, right? Um, and duplication ultimately is what leads to momentum and momentum leads to the residual income that each and every single one of us are after the impact that each and every single one of us are after the uh, recognition that each and every single one of us are after ultimately the success that each and every single one of us are after. So with that being said, guys, we're going to jump right into this, right? We're going to jump right into this. Uh, today, I'm going to be teaching you something that I actually learned um, from my mentor. Uh, I have two mentors, right? Uh, first of which is Mr. Christopher Terry, the CEO of I Am Master Academy, my first mentor, my rich dad, uh, for those of you guys that have read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Um, and the second is a gentleman by the name of uh, Pastor Rich Wilkerson, uh, the pastor for a church called Vu Church. Um, and every Thursday I get on these leadership mentorship calls, uh, nine o'clock in the morning, I'm, 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 I'm up right and early, I'm ready to fill my cup so I can provide that information to everyone inside of this company. And what it was that he spoke about today was just, or, or, or rather this week was just, I mean, it couldn't have been more relevant for what's going on. It couldn't have been more relevant um, specifically what's been going on the last few days. Um, and I think that, you know, we are given such a monumental platform um, like social media, given monumental platforms like I Am Mastery Academy, 
um, to stand upon and really influence change, uh, to really influence shifts in behaviors and shifts in mindset. Um, but I think that so often we get caught up in trying to do what's right, trying to teach people what is right, um, telling them what it is that we believe, um, the things that we've learned that we're not really listening, right? We're not really listening. So this segment, what I'm really going to go over, guys, is how to lead through adversity, how to lead during a crisis, how to listen during adversity, how to listen during a crisis. You see, crisis, adversity, and that, 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 that stuff that is going on out there does not define us, but it exposes us. It doesn't define us, but it exposes our strengths. It doesn't define us, but it exposes our weakness. It doesn't define us, but it exposes who we are as an organization, right? Um, so I'm going to be referring to a lot of the things that I've been taught by Rich um, and the stuff that he's been taught actually um, was given out of a book or, or taken out of a book called The Seven Habits of a highly effective person, the seven habits of a highly effective person. Um, and one of the chapters in there is uh, specifically what it is that we're talking about, right? And uh, the, the, the name of that chapter, this is a good place to start taking notes right now, right? The name of that chapter is Seek First to Understand, Then to Be Understood. Seek First to understand and then to be understood, right? Um, I, wanna, I wanna talk about listening to individuals. So many individuals want to be understood, right? But are they really speaking in order to be understood? Are they speaking in order to, to, to or, 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 or rather, are you listening to the individual that's speaking, right? You see a fool, it says in the Bible that a fool finds no pleasure in understanding. Us as leaders, one of the most highly effective skill sets, one of the highest paid skill sets that you can learn, one of the, one of the, one of the skill sets that are going to create change in the world that's going on outside is learning how to listen. You see so many people on this call obviously want to be in a place of leadership, right? That's why you're learning on a leadership call, a mentorship call, right? So we're always wanting to be in a place of leadership, right? But before we can learn to lead, we got to learn how to listen. Why is that? You see, when we're leading, essentially what we're doing is influencing. And according to Tony Robbins, Tony Robbins says that if you want to influence individuals, if you want to influence organizations, if you want to influence nations, you have to know what already influences these organizations, these people, these nations. You see, so often as influencers, we talk about the wrong things to the right people, the right things to the wrong people, right? And, and, and essentially, the number one way that you can find out what influences an individual is by asking questions and listening. You see, there's a reason as to why it is that, that, that God gave us two ears and one mouth, right? So we can listen twice as much as we speak. You guys understand what it is that I'm saying? You guys get me? So we can listen twice as much as we speak, guys. You see, people of wisdom, right? Wise individuals are slow to speak because they're listening to truly understand. They're not listening to respond. They are listening to truly understand a situation, understand a point of view, understand a specific individual. You see so many people right now are riding in the streets right now because they want to be heard. But who is listening? Who is out there truly listening? You see, guys, stop listening with the intent to reply and start listening with the intent to truly understand. You see, as we're waiting to reply and we're, 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 we're thinking of what to say, essentially we're thinking of the words that we believe will impact an individual, when in reality, check this out, I learned this, and this was a really, really cool uh, uh, statistic, right? 10% of communication is actually the words. So as you're spending 100% of the conversation uh, trying to analyze what you are going to say next, instead of trying to understand the situation, you're only covering 10% of the communication, which means that your point of view is not even being brought across. You see guys, most people get confused and, 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 and think that communication is just speaking, right? 
When in reality, 10% of communication is words. 30% is in the sound, the voice infliction, the tonality that we have. And 60% of communication is in body language. So vast majority of what people are understanding, vast majority of what it is that people are learning isn't even from the words that are being said. It's, it's the way it's being said. But we're so focused on thinking about what it is that we're gonna say next that we're not paying attention and truly learning how to understand. And because of that, we create these narratives in our head. Um, and these narratives in our head, when we don't understand something, we immediately challenge it. And we'll talk about that later. But uh, when we don't understand something, we immediately challenge it, right? Uh, and then because we're challenging it, it's another way of saying that we don't agree with an individual. And regardless if you agree or not, check this out. Before you could ever disagree with someone, make sure that you've agreed first. What does that mean, guys? Before you can ever disagree with somebody, make sure that you've agreed first, which means that you have to fully understand them. Even if you're not in the same boat as them, even if you may not truly agree, you have to understand them in order to effectively disagree or agree, right? So here, guys, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna talk about several lesson, uh, levels of listening, right? I wanna talk about several levels of listening because as you get on calls after this, as you continue with your day-to-day -day life, as you step outside, whether it's to go to the grocery store to peacefully protest for what's going on right now, you're going to be having conversations with individuals, some of which are looking to be heard. And while we're out there, while we're out there having these conversations with these individuals, I want to make sure that you're truly listening, right? So we're going to talk about these levels of listening. The first level of listening is called ignoring, all right? We all, we all do it one way or another, maybe you ignore the kids, maybe you ignore the responsibilities you have, maybe you ignore your wife and husband, maybe you ignore people that you just don't like, we've all ignored before. That is having zero interest in what is right in front of you. You're completely ignoring it. It might as well be transparent because you're seeing right through it. But the second level of listening is pretending, right? Uh, pretending is, man, that, I think that's worse than ignoring, to be real, to pretend to be interested in somebody. I'd rather just let them know that I'm not interested in, in them at all. You see, when you're pretending, you're, you're, you're basically seeing right through them. They basically might as well be transparent as well, but you just want to be polite, right? The third level is selective listening. Um, selective listening, I catch myself doing it from time to time. Maybe you're at a party, and someone's talking to you and you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're looking over their shoulder the entire time. Um, you're, 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 you're only interested by specific keywords that may trigger you, that may get you excited. But we're selectively listening to these individuals. We're not there. So a lot of the times we're on these opportunity calls, we're on these you know, uh, uh, we're building our warm market. We're, 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 we're having conversations with individuals and the entire time they're talking, we're not really listening to what it is that they're saying. And because of that, they're not really interested in what it is that we're saying because people don't care what it is that you know. And so they know that you genuinely care, right? The next level, the fourth level is called attentive listening. Now, attentive listening this is when you're engaging inside of the conversation. This is where you're asking questions inside of the conversation. This is where you start to truly understand individuals, right? This is the level as to which real conversation, it, 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 it's, it's in progress. And because of that real conversation, real relationships can stem from these real conversations. You see, at the attentive state, you're not just focused on what you're going to say next but you're genuinely trying to understand these individuals. And then the next level, the last level of listening is called the empathetic level of listening. You see, it's the ability to put yourself in someone's shoes, not trying to understand, but wholeheartedly understanding where it is that someone's coming from. Understanding people, not just seeking to be understood. In a tentative listening, you, you're often seeking to be understood, but you're engaging in meaningful conversation. You see, empathetic listening is putting yourself in their situation and truly understanding. You see what's going on in the world right now. I may not be black. Jason may not be black, right? But 
The color of our skin does not mean that I am not affected by this. The color of our skin does not mean that you are not affected by this. And we empathetically understand what it is that's going on. And if we're going to be a representation of this company, of this organization, of this structure of leadership, we need to truly begin to move in unison with that style of belief. We need to go out there and truly empathetically understand individuals and what it is that's going on. Because people are already listening to what it is that we're saying. People are already watching what it is that we're doing. Let's go out there and understand the world so we can then make new impact. You feel me? So that's how it is that you listen. Those are the levels of listening, right? Now, here's several things to consider when it comes to listening as a leader. Because each and every single one of us on this call are a leader in one way or another. You see, some of us on this call are leading our household. Some of us are leading our marriage. Some of us are leading our organizations. Some of us are leading movements. Some of us are leading cultures. Some of us are leaders at our jobs. Each and every single one of you guys are a leader or will become a leader at one point or another on different scales of magnitude, all right? And here's some things that you, no matter if it's with your kids, your spouse, your team, these are some things that you should keep in consideration when listening, maybe having a conversation with somebody at a grocery store about what's going on in the world. These are things that you should keep in consideration because I truly believe that it'll cause unity um, and, and, and break a lot of barriers during conversation. So first of all, remember to always be curious, not critical. Remember to always be curious, not critical. You see, when we're having conversations so often, we define things right when we see it or right when we hear it, right? We, we, we immediately just rebuttal. We immediately start, 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 start judging, right? And it's so hard not to because it's our opinion. And with laws and, and, and freedoms like freedom of speech inside of our amendment, it's become such second nature to just immediately become critical in situations, become critical when talking to people about their viewpoints, become critical when, when, when learning from individuals, right? But here's the thing, leaders, leaders don't criticize, leaders understand. Leaders are curious, but they don't criticize. You don't believe me? I don't know about you, but they don't build statues on critics. I've never decided to follow a critic. Critics aren't absolutely changing the world. You see, I'd rather be a chef than a food critic. I'd rather be a producer than a movie critic. I'd rather be a chairman than somebody that criticizes the organization. So before you go out there and you begin to criticize people's standpoints, people's views, people's actions, people rioting in the street, people, people, people protesting, before you criticize, become curious as to why it is that they're doing what it is that they're doing, right? Become curious as to why it is that their actions are the way they are. Another thing to consider when you're listening, be careful, not crushing. Be careful, not crushing. We must be sensitive towards individuals. You see, as you build this organization, you're gonna have people from all different demographics of life. You're gonna have black, white, you're gonna have gay, you're gonna have straight, you're gonna have skinny, you're gonna have fat, you're gonna have Christian, you're gonna have Muslim, you're gonna have people that are, that are, that are not, 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 not they, they, they believe in the tooth fairy. You're gonna have people that have been to jail and you're gonna have people that have been to Yale, right? You're gonna have people that have been through all different walks of life and you need to be sensitive towards cultures. You need to be sensitive towards, towards religions. You need to be sensitive towards viewpoints. You need to be sensitive towards, towards literally everything. There's a reason as to why it is that Jason and I have businesses in over 30 different countries. You see, I've been in the Democratic Republic of Congo. I've spent time in Australia. I've spent time in Eastern Europe. I've gone to Bosnia. I've, I've built organizations in Serbia. Shout out to the Serbia squad, right? We, we, we have organizations in places we can't even speak the language. And why is that? 
And you see, we have organizations where we, we, during certain times of the year, they're not working because they're not allowed to. We're sensitive towards those things. And because of that, our organizations see that. You see, next time you're having a conversation and you may not understand somebody, don't crush them. Don't belittle them. Don't say, you know, right now, I, I, I may not agree. You see, I'm all down for the riots because a revolt needs a little push, right? I'm all down for the protests, but I'm not okay with the looting. I'm not okay with harming people. I'm not okay with bashing people's businesses. But before I go onto social media and I begin to speak as to why it is that I don't believe in that, I'm gonna make sure that I'm sensitive to everybody reading it. Not because I'm afraid of voicing, but because I have no intention of harming. You see, be careful. Don't crush individuals, judge not. Yes, as leaders, it is our job to challenge the status quo, to challenge the mindset, to challenge the behaviors, to make people better, but we need to do so with empathy. If you're gonna challenge somebody, challenge them. You see, earlier today I posted about, I'm cool with the riots, I get it. I'm cool with the protests, I get it. We hear you and I'm with you, but I'm not okay with the rioting. And I challenged people, I challenged people to lead with love. I challenged people to watch out for one another while they're out there. I challenge people to not harm one another. You see, that's the difference. That's the difference. So let's be careful not crushing. Another thing to keep in the, in, in, into consideration when listening as a leader, ask and don't assume. Ask and don't assume. One of my biggest pet peeves growing up as a kid, my mom, she would get angry at us. And, 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 and it was immediately what we did wrong instead of why we did what we did. I have a massive organization of leaders and we're not perfect. Over 100,000 inside of the organization, we're not perfect. We're honest, we're not perfect. And when my leaders do something that isn't a proper representation of the way it is that we do things, I don't go to them and I say, don't do that. You shouldn't have done that. Now that's assuming. But I go to them and say, why'd you do that? What happened? What's your intention behind doing that? What are you trying to accomplish behind doing that? You see, I lead with questions instead of statements. And because of that, it helps both parties understand. You see, I may not truly understand why my leaders are doing something. I may not truly understand why people are doing what it is that they're doing out there. So I need to go ahead and I need to ask and not just assume that things are being done. Because when I ask, they explain, and in turn, they learn about themselves as well. Now, I, 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 I recently had one of my leaders, uh, a chairman inside of our organization, um, and he was posting some uh, income lifestyle related things. You know, we're not allowed to do that in this company. We got to protect this place. This is our home. This is our meal ticket. This is our opportunity to change the world. And I told him, I said, look, man, you know, for a fact that your page is being watched by the whole company, you're a figure of authority here. Why are you doing that? What's going on, bro? You've been told time and time again, why do you keep on posting those things, man? What are you trying to accomplish? What's your intention? He had no answer. He had no answer. And I think that the lack of an answer gave him more insight than any suspension could have done, than any reprimands, uh, 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 reprimanding could have done, because he came to the realization so ask, lead with questions, and don't lead with statements. And the last thing to take into consideration is connect before you correct. Connect before you correct. You see, grace comes first, guys. It has to come first. You can't go and reprimand somebody you don't have a relationship with, you don't have a connection with. You see, us as leaders, our job is to challenge the status quo. Us as leaders, our job is to challenge the behaviors. Our, our, our job is to challenge the organization in order to make them better. But you can't go out and challenge somebody if you haven't connected with that individual, grace always comes first as leaders. We have to correct, we have to challenge people, but, but we have to do so with connection of a built relationship 
first. We have to do so with, with built relation. Why do you think I'm on the road so often? Obviously not right now with this whole coronavirus thing, right? But why do you think it is that I'm on the road so often? It isn't to push volume inside of an organization because truth be told, a tour will cost me and Jason tens of thousands of dollars if we're on the road for 30 days between uh, 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 um, uh, employees that we bring with us, right? Uh, between hotel rooms, between team dinners, between uh, flights all over the world. I mean, it, it adds up to tens of thousands. And we won't put in a fraction of what we've just been able to accomplish here within the last three months of building online. So I don't travel nonstop. Jason doesn't travel nonstop in order to just simply put volume into the teams. That's why when I see people post on social media about oh, the, the, the chairman, they're just marketing for a check. That blows my mind. If I was doing something for just a check, I'd stay home. The reason I'm on the road all the time is to build relationships. You know, you can build a relationship through a screen, but when we sit down and you feel this energy, when I sit down and I find out why it is that you're doing what it is that you're doing for, when I find out about your why, when I find out about your life, when we make commitments together, when we break bread together, you see that right there, it's irreplaceable. So I go ahead and I make sure that I pay financially, I pay spiritually, I pay my energy, I pay my time in order to be able to produce those relationships. Because when those relationships are produced, then and only then are the guards down of the individuals that you're speaking to. When the guards down, they're receptive to what it is that you're trying to say. So before you go ahead and you try to correct, make sure that you connect. Guys, we have very big goals here within I Am Mastery Academy. Monumental, some would call us insane, but that's cool. I'm a psychopath. You got to be insane to accomplish what it is that we're trying to accomplish. January of 2019. January of 2019, there was 50,000 customers inside of the business. Today, 17 months later, we're just shy of a quarter million customers. Over the course of the past 90 days, 100,000 out of those quarter million have joined the organization. So we know how to quadruple the size of the business. We've already done so. We've proven that in the past 17 months. Here's the challenge though. We have until December of 2020, that's it. December of 2020 to accomplish our goal of building an organization that has impacted, enriched, and educated the lives of 1 million customers. We have until December of 2020, six months, in order to help create a thousand chairman tens and above. We have until December 2020, six months to create a billion dollar brand. We're currently at a quarter billion dollar company. We're currently with about 300 chairmen. We have about a quarter million people inside of the business. So that means we're about a quarter way to the goal. So you got to ask yourself, how many of those individuals are going to come from your organization? How much of that revenue is going to come from your organization? How many of those chairmen are going to come from your organization? I challenge you to get behind this, right? Because momentum really happens when you have a group of individuals moving in unison towards one specific task and goal. I challenge you to get in with that. I challenge you to help us quadruple the size of this company, in turn, helping us quadruple the size of the impact. It doesn't scare me. The how doesn't matter to me because it's already done. Time just hasn't caught up yet. And when you make that decision, the universe, God, or whatever it is that you believe in conspires a theory in order to fill in the blanks. And that's exactly what happens over the next six months. 2021 begins today. We're running through our goals. We're not running to our goals. So I encourage you to get with that. And um, I encourage you to continue crushing it, right? Because you guys have done an insane job the first six months of this year. I mean, I'm talking about the greatest six months that I've seen in my six year career. So we thank you. We honor you. We appreciate you. And we celebrate you. I want to introduce my boy, Jay. You guys know exactly who Jay is. Um, but a lot of you guys see the wrong Jay, you know, Jason Brown. A lot of you guys see him as the chairman 500. A lot of you guys see him as a seven figure earner. A lot of you guys see him as the individual that's helping you guys with compliance issues or, issues inside of the back office or issues with volume. A lot of you guys see him as the individual with sold out events or the blue check mark on Instagram. But I get to see Jay from a different light. You see, I see the Jay that's up at all hours of the night, helping individuals from different parts of the world. I see the Jay that becomes overwhelmed because he has not been able to focus on himself because he's so focused on others. I see the Jay that has literally put people over profits for the past five years that we've been working together. 
I see the Jay that's been behind a lot of the product development. I see the Jay that has been in your living rooms, that is on the calls with you guys, that treats P150s and Chairman 500s the exact same. Um, and I'm excited to see Jay provide an insane amount of value for each and every single one of you guys. So guys, we have massive goals, we have massive ambition in order to make these goals a reality. Let's go ahead and let's make it happen. I appreciate you guys. I love you guys. God bless you guys. And um, Jay. My brother, can you hear me? I think you need to make me host so I can get my camera. But um, <clears throat> man, I'm, I'm grateful for, uh, for the introduction, the edification. Um, I heard those words very loud and clear. And um, you know, I'm, I'm very grateful to, uh, to be here with you guys on a Sunday afternoon. Um, you know, we, we are full throttle uh, for the past, honestly, for the past five years. I mean, what we've done in, uh, in the last six months, it's kind of crazy to think that I can't, I can't believe it's halfway. Like, I can't believe New Year's was six months ago. I, I just, like, I actually, not just cliche, like, I literally cannot perceive that whatsoever. I can't, I can't grab it. Um, but it's crazy because we've been, we've been in the trenches serving leaders, um, just, just really following the principles of success for a long time. And, um, I'm just grateful because it seems like our platform is growing with our level of emotional intelligence, our level of leadership, our level of coachability, our level of humility, the platform continues to grow. And, um, you know, a lot of people are looking for that secret. Matt just gave an amazing training. I, I literally have been on this entire call and uh, Matt gave an amazing training about, you know, how to, how to properly listen. And uh, it's funny because I've never heard listening broken down like that. And so as he was going through the different levels, I was thinking of moments when I've fallen into each category and I'm sure you guys were listening to him going, yep, I've been there before. Yep. Been there before. Yep. Been there before. And um, I don't think, you know, falling into any of those categories at specific times is a bad thing. You know, I think you, uh, at certain times, you know, you just have certain ways of, of overlooking or just allowing, you know, maybe, maybe it's the wrong people around you. So you're falling into one of those levels. But it's really interesting because I was thinking of different situations that I know I've been around people that I love and I actually care about. Uh, but maybe they were talking about a topic that didn't really resonate with me or they were talking about a political dispute that I didn't really want to be a part of and I fell into maybe a category one two or three um, but then there was a time where I fell into a four or five so it was really great training and honestly I uh, I'm grateful that I jumped on and was able to be a part of that and funny enough Matt and I did not plan we uh we we just said hey you know let's get on we've been doing a lot of trainings uh, a lot of trainings together a lot of we have a lot of things planned for the next few weeks. So, you know, we're trying to, um, you know, just, you know, continue to give value and not, uh, not just keep saying the same thing over and over again. You know, you, you don't want to actually, one of the things I'm going to talk about, uh, is from this book, John C. Maxwell. Um, every time I go on Amazon and I buy a book, I end up buying like six, a, you know, book people who bought this also recommended this, you know, I think we've all been there. And uh, this was a book that I got. I don't remember exactly when, but um, it was sitting on my shelf. And, you know, I've really been trying to grab good information and just good structure because, you know, I don't think people are going to know exactly what books are great. And I always tell people, look, you know, the best information you're going to get has already been discerned. Uh, like Matt um, has been following you know, Pastor Rich and getting amazing information, which Rich got from another source. And, you know, our, our job as leaders is to gain information and then, you know, basically soak it in, become that sponge and then release that sponge in places that need, you know, more hydration. And so you come to these calls because you're looking for that leadership hydration. And uh, we go, we fill our cup uh, in order to honestly hydrate the rest of the world. And, um, you know, this book, Good Leaders Ask Great Questions. As Matt's starting to talk, I'm like, man, you got to be kidding me. And I was, I was thinking, you know, maybe I change it, but there will be some, some overlaps. But I think God has a funny way of working. Uh, Matt and I bro, did not. It's out. alignment. It's alignment, bro. We're completely aligned. That is crazy. I, I literally was like, you know what? I'm actually going to add 
and, and, you know, kind of weave in and out. And I'm actually just going to go through this chapter, which is incredible. It's chapter four. If you have the book, um, if you don't, it's a, it's in a, one of John C. Maxwell's best books because a lot of the times people are looking for that outward leadership, right? What do I bring to my team? What do I, you know, how do I give more value? And I think a lot of the questions that I get asked and Matt, I'm sure a lot of the questions that you get asked and for all the leaders on this call, we have chairman on this call, chairman 25 is on this call, 50 is on this call. I think these are questions that we get a lot and uh, it looks like we're not alone. And so the first thing, so he breaks this down, there's 10 questions that he asks and then responds to. And I'm going to give my feedback as we go. Um, the first one is why does leading myself seem more difficult than leading others? And he says, one of the reasons we have such difficulty leading others is that we have blind spots preventing us from seeing where we have the problems and then we fall short. And so his first example of a blind spot is having a single perspective. And Matt, this was one of the things that you talked about, you know, no matter how many, no matter how a conversation begins, you end up talking about your favorite subject. Sometimes as leaders, we could start a topic on USDJPY, right? We're talking about, you know, uh, we're talking about uh, United States dollar for the Japanese yen and what's happening there. Or we're talking about a trade that was called on swipe trades. We're talking about something on the harmonic scanner with one of our customers. And because we love Bitcoin, we drag the conversation to Bitcoin, right? Or because we love binary options, we drag the conversation to binary. Or because we love a different educator or a different tool, we drag the conversation to a different place. And so sometimes as leaders, yes, we are genuinely excited or we have genuine belief or we have a genuine testimonial, but having a single perspective on a subject, a topic, et cetera, is actually what John C. Maxwell refers to as a leadership blind spot. You know, I have a really nice car, which we're not going to talk about because we're not allowed, but that car has blind spots. And it, sometimes I feel very uncomfortable driving in a, you know, when it's busy, when there's a lot of people around, when I don't know the area, I feel a bit of anxiety because there's just certain parts that I cannot see. And in your leadership, sometimes you feel uncomfortable. And a lot of the reason for that could be because you have a single perspective. I want you guys to reflect on that. Where in your leadership, I'm gonna do the same because nobody is perfect. And there's probably some places where I have a single perspective. I know that I have a singular perspective about energy and emotional intelligence. And so when I see negativity, when I see people complaining, when I see people throwing shade, when I see you know issues, I just shut down and I just create a solution. And sometimes that singular perspective is a little aggressive and so people take it like i'm desensitized like i don't have a heart right like i'm a little bit cold because when things are happening when drama is happening i just i just shut into i don't shut down but i shut into this solution positive energy i don't want negativity last night we were driving through miami and there's riots and and i was with my girlfriend and she was talking about it. i said let's change the subject why because i want this energy to stay the same because I believe the law of attraction works on anything, not just positive, but law of attraction is also negative, correct? So singular perspective sometimes is a good thing, but look at what's happening in the world right now. Sometimes people have a singular perspective and it creates two singular perspectives that clash like Democrats and Republicans, right? That's why they can never come to a common goal. So the second example he gives is you keep giving the same speech, the same lecture, or the same piece of advice over and over again. And I want to bring you back to the question, why does leading myself seem more difficult than leading others? When you feel dry, guess what? Sometimes you are. You have to shift the strategy. I've talked about this for years. Shift the strategy, right? When, when you keep regurgitating the same information, the same, so, you know, people come to you with 10 different problems and you have the same answer. Guys, that is an issue because you, you are not leading yourself. You know, part of leading ourselves is being able to understand how to be dynamic in our leadership. Matt talked about it. We've had to be dynamic from different cultures, different, you know, groups, different age brackets, right? So being dynamic in your leadership and being 
one dimensional in your leadership is a blind spot. Being dynamic is abundance. Okay. And then the third example he gives is you are always right. You're going to have a hard time leading yourself if you cannot drop the ego and put yourself in the shoes of somebody else, right? Having that ability to step out and see things from all perspectives has allowed me to solve problems, has allowed Matt to solve problems. And when we solve problems as entrepreneurs, that's when we get the results that we're looking for. The second thing, the second major thing that he talks about with leading yourself is insecurity. Do you have a hard time giving credit to other people? Do you keep information from other people? Do you try to keep your team or your staff, here he says staff, away from good leaders. I think that insecurity plays a big role with maybe 25 to 30% of leaders in the world, not just in our company, but just worldwide. And I see it. I see it with different MLMs. I see it with different sales organizations. Insecurity is really a huge blind spot. And the reason why is because a lot of times we have jealousy, right? We were born with a jealous component inside and we have to heal that ourselves, right? And so if you cannot genuinely celebrate the success of other people, if you cannot genuinely find that burning desire to help other people win, that is an insecurity because ultimately in leadership, it's not just about your victories, but it's about empowering the victories of other people. Do you keep information from people, right? Sometimes we know we're about to get on a fire training but we don't share it with everybody for our own selfish reasons, right? We, we get this amazing content. We get on this awesome training call. We have this inner circle opportunity. We have all these notes, but we keep it for ourselves because we want the, we want the head up. We want the, the advantage in the race. Okay, so just think about that. Number three, he says an out of control ego, pride, is the foundation of all mistakes. That's powerful. Pride is at the foundation of all great mistakes. Wow. Guys, pride is a big issue. Ego, out of control ego is a serious issue. You know, we've dealt with leaders throughout the years that believe that their way is the only way. So the questions he asked is, do you think no one else can do a job as well as you? Guys, it, can, are other leaders capable of going Chairman 500? Absolutely. Are other leaders capable of going Chairman 750, Chairman 250, Chairman 100, Chairman 50? Absolutely. So unless you are the only one for eternity that can do something, then you cannot let your ego get in the way. Because sometimes, and even then, you should never let your ego get in the way. Right? And, and, and ego, pride, comes before the fall. Are others always to blame when things go wrong? How many times do we see people that can never take blame? That can never say, I'm sorry. That can never say, I made a mistake. There have been times where my pride and ego were in the way. And I had to, I had to smack that ego pretty hard in order to step up and apologize. And once you do that, you start to break down your own pride. You start to break down your own ego. So is ego and pride a blind spot in your organization? And they just talk about weak character it is the next one. Are you just a weak, do you, do you care about other people or do you only care about yourself? Do you often miss deadlines? Do you make vows, promises, and then you don't, you don't hold them up? Do you say you're going to make a change? Do you say you're going to do a promotion? Do you say you're going to show up to a call? Do you say you're going to do three ways? Do you say that you're going to do something and then oftentimes you find yourself going back to old behaviors. Do you place, you know, if you have a priority and something else comes up over and over, hey, emergencies are emergencies, but are you putting lifestyle? We've had leaders on yachts while they're supposed to be on trainings. That is a weak character because you're ultimately putting your own self-gratification in front of other people. So the next major topic, okay, so that one was, Let's just go back. Why does leading myself seem more difficult than leading others? Because in order for you to go out and give, Matt just gave an amazing training on this last week, you have to fill your cup before you can go fill the cup of other people. So he says, assume that you have blind spots. Look for those blind spots and cure 
those blind spots. What gives a leader sustainability? This is the next topic. We're doing pretty good on time. What gives a leader sustainability? Number one, passion. Guys, when you have passion, a true passion for serving other people, a true passion for a why, a true passion for your vision, nothing, nothing, nothing can take you off your tracks. Right? We, Matt and I share certain passions, passions for people, passions for impact, passion for change, passion for unity. So something like what the world is going through right now, I feel empowered because my passion is to create unity. And so while I see separation and I see pain and I see frustration, I also see opportunity to step in with the passion that we have and make a difference. Principles. Successful leaders create principles and stay true to those principles, their beliefs, their gifts, their personalities. They don't try to become something that they're not. I've always been who I am. Do I love learning from David and Monitier? Do I love learning from Bob Proctor? Do I love learning from Alex Morton? Do I love learning from my pastor? Do I love learning from people? The right people, for sure. But do I change who I am? No, I grow in who I am. And so when you have a set of core principles that you hold yourself to, those principles are what will give you sustainability. I would recommend that all of you get a set of principles. When I was in my fraternity in college, we had three core principles, unity, trust, and secrecy. And those three core principles held an invisible bond in between me and about 30 of my fraternity brothers. They were some of the most trusted and still to this day are some of the most trusted people in the world because we held ourselves with invisible glue to those core principles. So what principles does your organization hold themselves upon? When Matt and I started, we were, we were the rioters against the network marketing space. For the people that were getting treated like a number, Matt and I were like, oh no, we're gonna be the coalition, like people over profits. And we're gonna go do this. We're gonna do it better than anybody's done it before because we're gonna put people first. And if we're ever in a situation where people are not the priority, then we will leave. And we did exactly that. And that's how we ended up here in this company. And I believe that's a big reason why. You see what's happening around the world is because we do not put up with any shady anything. I love Chris Terry, I love Vice's Delatory, but if they were not good people, we would not be here. And that is a fact. So principles, they hold themselves to principles. We hold ourselves to principles. Before you go to sleep tonight, set a core group of principles and then you practice those principles because that's the next one. It says practice. You have to practice what you preach. You have to put into play what you stand for. You cannot tell people loyalty, integrity, consistency, and then you're unloyal, unfaithful, lack integrity, lie, cheat, steal, and you're not consistent. You can't tell your leaders in a group chat, we got to grind, it's Monday, and you're not grinding. You can't tell your leaders, go enroll three people, and you're not enrolling three people. You can't tell your leaders, go into phase one, and you don't go into phase one. That is called a lack of integrity. If I say, go do something, I will do it. If not, I just won't tell you to do it. If I, hey, look, if you're not willing to enroll 10 people, then just don't do it, but don't talk about it. If you're not willing to go in phase one, because everybody has their seasons. There's been seasons where I don't feel like going into phase one. I gotta be honest, but I'm not telling people go phase one and I'm not. That's lack of integrity. What are the most important values for a leader? Servanthood. You have to serve. Servanthood, you have to serve. You are not the king. You are not the queen. Matt and I do not need you guys to serve us. David does not need you to serve him. Chris Terry and Isis don't need you to serve them. And if a leader says, serve me, that's not a leader. That's not a leader. I'm sorry, but it's not. That's a dictator. And guess what? If you're a dictator in your business, you may still get results, but you're leading with fear, not with faith. See, for me, I know that if we serve the people, the result will happen. And the result will happen not on my time, but on divine time. 
the things that you cannot control, the things that you cannot see, often give you the results that you desire in your heart. But servanthood, leading well means serving others. Jesus, I don't care if you believe or not, this is not a religious thing, but there's a story about Jesus cleaning people's feet right before he died. Servant leadership. Purpose. Let your why direct your what. Matt literally said this. Another alignment. Let your why direct your what. When the why is strong enough, the what, the how, the who, it will all fall into place. What is your why? When I started, my why was to retire my parents. As that started to happen, I had to redevelop a bigger why. Once we went to Africa, we took a trip, Matt, Austin, and myself, we took a trip to Africa. I saw, we drove, we drove through about a 15 mile run in the Democratic Republic of Congo. If you want, you could look at my Instagram. There were, there were video, I didn't get every video. It was really bad connection. But there were videos of people packed in vans, people walking in the streets, millions and millions of people. And at the end of the day, we're all flesh and blood. And I, I, I developed this love, this passion for making an impact in Africa. I have great friends over there. We have big plans. Right before this quarantine, we had huge plans outside of MLM just to go there and do mission work. And now one of my biggest whys, and I, I've been talking about it for weeks and it's happening, is that we are going to create a movement to bring clean drinking water to every village in Africa that needs it. And, and we're gonna transform so many people's lives just by one simple act that costs about $1,200 a well. But we're gonna need millions and millions and millions of dollars to do that. So guess what? I don't know exactly what, I don't know exactly how, and I don't know exactly who, but I know why. And I believe that when your heart desires the right things, the why no longer, the, the why is all that matters and all the other things will fall into place. So when you have purpose in your leadership, you'll grind on Sunday. You'll grind on Monday. You'll grind on Tuesday. You'll grind. You'll get up early in the morning and go to sleep late at night because your why and your passion and your purpose are much bigger than your problems. Integrity. You must be a good person. When you become a leader, you must focus more on your responsibilities than on your rights. When you become a leader, you must focus more on your responsibilities than on your rights. Some people feel entitled. I'm a leader. I'm a leader. I deserve to sit at the front table. I deserve to get food. I deserve to get breakfast in the morning, lunch in the middle. I've heard all of this stuff running conventions. We deserve this. We deserve. No, you don't deserve anything. You earn. Respect is key. Don't get it twisted. Respect is a two-way street. But what, but, but literally the highest level of leadership says you must focus on your responsibilities as a leader, which is how I became this VP title, whatever. Anyway, titles are stupid. I just understand that leading means you fill the gaps and you solve problems says relationships the next major key walk slowly i love this walk slowly through the crowd you know i love tony robbins and i think tony robbins is a great motivational speaker but if i ever get to that point in my career where i'm a coach and a mentor as a neutral from a neutral ground i think i would keep the circle small because I think you can, you can make an impact on somebody if they're a part of a crowd, a part of an audience, for sure. But you can make a complete life-altering shift when you put focus on a relationship and then you, you, you shift people through that relationship. Um, the other night, one of our Chairman 25s had, a, had an issue. And because I was able to go to him directly and talk to him directly, he had a shift that he's still thanking me for, a shift, right? So that's true, true impact. Number four, hopefully we'll make it through all these. What is the most effective daily habit for any leader to develop? What is the most? Gratitude, consistency, and productivity. Gratitude, gratitude for others. You need to spend, Matt, Matt has a strategy, I have a strategy to give gratitude where it's due. Thank you. Thank you. Hold the door for people. 
let people cross. Even when I go out to the supermarket, just the little things make you feel good. Let that compound over time. Let that compound over time. Gratitude, guys. Most effective daily habits. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Being consistent with whatever it is that you're doing. Those are the important things. Gratitude, giving. Last week we stopped there. I know there's a bunch of homeless people and uh, I, I, we had a bunch of food left over and I literally brought it down and I just dropped it off. Gratitude, gratitude, gratitude. Those things are gonna keep you going, okay? Number five, how does one change? This is big because a lot of people ask me this question in some way, shape or form. How does one change one's heart to increase the desire to add value and to serve others? Because some people say, look, I've been told this before. They say, Jay, I want to give to other people, but I don't, I don't feel like I'm, I'm there yet. I don't feel like I have it. I don't feel like I've got enough. That's why you got to go fill your cup. That's why you got to be complete in your development. Because some people are in the gym getting six-pack abs, but they're not doing spiritual development. So they're floppy. They got a, they, they got a, they got a beer belly in their spiritual life. They got a beer belly in their mental you know, personal development life. They got a beer belly in their financial life. So you got a six pack gap in the gyms, but you're unfit in the other major categories. You cannot go and truly give somebody a life altering value, a life altering lesson. You cannot be a change to other people until you become that change for yourself. And I'm not telling you if you got a beer belly in the gym that you're a bad leader, right? But I'm saying the, the more you can be complete, the more you can add value to others. I know that I was empty for a long time, even after my bank account was full. And I was not full spiritually until I put the bank account like as opportunity or as, as, uh, as a uh, priority, like number five, six, seven, right? Money's obviously important, but when money is your number one priority, that's a big problem. So I had to knock that down and put my relationship with God, my spiritual life first above all, because even at a time, family was first. A family cannot be first. Your relationship with God has to be first. And the reason why is not because your family is not the most important thing. It's because your relationship spiritually. So if you don't believe in God, then that's fine. You have to have an internal relationship. You have to meditate. You have to reflect. You have to understand you because you cannot be a rock for your family if you're not even a rock for yourself. You can't be a bowl of jello and then you got to be stern for your family. You got to make a difference in your family. It doesn't work that way. I, I, have be, I went from being a bowl of jello physically, mentally, spiritually, and financially. About four years ago, I was a bowl of jello in all four categories. And I had to become stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger because you guys depend on it. My family depends on it. My future family depends on that. So you can change and, and add a desire. You can add passion to others when you fix it for yourself. If I am reaching goals and achieving success, why should I take care of developing myself further? If I am reaching goals and achieving success, why should I take care of developing myself? I think this happens a lot. I think, you know, Chairman 10 will change your life. I think P5000 will change your life. I think Chairman 25 will definitely change your life. And I think Chairman 50 and above, you're, you're, you're on a different level. And this is a Chairman leadership call. So even if you're a P150, even if you just got started, I want you to listen. I want you to listen very carefully because there will be a point in time where you become a Chairman 10, where you become a Chairman 25, where you become, where you become a Chairman 50. And the minute you stop growing, the minute you stop getting into the right room for leadership development. The minute you stop getting on these calls because you got better stuff to do, the minute that you stop attaining new information is literally the minute that you start dying. And a lot of the times people hit this peak, they hit the very top of the mountain and they're like, yes, I've wanted to be a chairman for so long. And then they just stop doing personal development. They stop reading new books. They stop getting new information. They stop going to conventions. They stop going to conventions to learn. They're at conventions texting. They're at conventions smoking weed. 
they're at conventions partying Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night. They're only at conventions to try to find their future husband, future wife. They're only at conventions to party with people. And that's the minute you start dying. Not that, not that I don't say like, don't have any fun, right? But at the end of the day, the last three conventions, I stopped doing parties. I stopped going out. I stopped because I'm here to learn. I'm not here to party. There's a time for A and there's a time for B. And I, stopped, I started getting on these calls because at the end of the day, there was a point in my leadership where I stopped growing and it was when I stopped wanting to attain new information. You need a plan for growth. Have you watched Chris Terry's go live? Have you watched Bob Proctor's go lives? Do you get up early in the morning, mornings with Neno? Are you getting value? Words Taylor on go live? Are you getting on the trading calls? Are you trying to develop yourself as a trader? You just want to go chairman. You don't care about trading. Just some questions for you guys. How do you lead with humility when in the tough corporate world it is viewed as a weakness? See, it's funny because this is a book from a corporate perspective. Actually, in network marketing, if you don't have humility, you're, you're, you're done. But it says pride versus humility. And there's a whole thing here. Humility doesn't mean you're weak. It just means, it means thinking of yourself less. So it doesn't mean you have to break down who you are. It doesn't mean that you have to devalue yourself. It doesn't mean that you have to disintegrate or dissolve that core value that you bring. It means that in your mind, you don't need the throne. You can sit all the way off to the side and have that peace and love in your heart. I remember one time I was at an event and I was sitting on the floor and some girl ran over. She was like, oh, no, no, don't do that. Please, please, please. You're a chair at 500. Please don't do that. And I said, what? No, I'm good. She's like, no, 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 please. You sit up front. We'll get you water. We'll get... I don't know, man. I always just feel uncomfortable, like having to be at the front table. I don't know. I just can't sit still because I don't feel like I'm better than anybody else. In fact, I feel like I'm, I'm lower. Right, because until I see those leaders winning, I can't, I can't celebrate. Like we have a couple people that are close to hitting ranks, and if we hit Chairman Seven Fifty before them, I'm not gonna have as much. I'm not gonna have fun. Like I'm gonna be grateful. I'm gonna be grateful, grateful, grateful. But I just have this thing. I just want to see people win. You gotta find a way to fall in love with the success of other people. So then he talks about transparency, which is obviously important. He talks about how, you know, you can be transparent. If you have personal issues, you need to communicate it to your team. He talks about how you can be transparent with certain things, but you shouldn't always bring problems. Like if you're always bringing your team problems, then your team is always going to be in a problematic situation. So you have to have discernment, which means the ability to just make the right decisions and follow your spirit on those decisions. You need to be able to have discernment in that situation to not bring problems because problems do not go down. Problems go up. Problems go to the people who can solve them. You should not bring drama and negativity into your team. But if you have a personal thing you're going through, you need to communicate that. Because some we've had leaders that have been going through it personally and they don't tell their team so the team thinks that they've been abandoned. Proper communication will get the right people to rally behind you. Matt and I have had leaders that have gone through some serious personal issues, so we picked our game up to take their slack. But if they didn't communicate, we would have thought that they were in a different place. Number nine, the leadership process is a long journey. How can I overcome the loneliness that I feel? Honestly, I'm just going to give you this. Let loneliness drive you to aloneness. When you are feeling the weight of leadership, Find ways to get by yourself and think things through. I went to dinner last night with Matt and he was talking about how, you know, he's getting ready to go to Colorado and he's going to literally climb up to the top of the mountain one day and spend the entire day by himself. Like he's going with friends and family. Um, I'm going to Tennessee for a couple of days next week. Funny enough. Um, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to say, Hey guys, I love you, but I got to go. I'm going to go do my thing. And I'm just going to go spend time alone. It doesn't mean that I'm lonely. It means I'm alone. I put a sauna in my apartment every day. I take one hour by myself. And it cures that 
empty feeling because now you reflect and you think and you don't have the distractions of the world. You don't have the media. You don't have the TV. You don't have the, the traffic. We live in a very traffic oriented space. Sometimes you need to shut down the city. You need to put yourself in quarantine, a healthy one. The last thing, very powerful way to end this amazing leadership call. We're right about one hour. I want to be respectful of your time. How can leaders develop the ability to filter their emotions and make good leadership decisions? I've been talking about emotional intelligence forever. Some people get mad because I'm like, you need emotional intelligence. And they're like, no, I don't. Like, you have emotions right now. Yes, you do. That's okay. Um, number one, he says, to filter your emotions, do your homework. Before you speak, see, Matt literally talked about this one bullet point very in depth. Do your homework. The first defense against having unfiltered emotions negatively affect your decision, making it, um, my bad. The first defense against having unfiltered emotions negatively affect your decision making is to consider the facts, right? So you have to realize that in a situation, there will be emotions on both sides. And you have to bring facts to the table. You have to do your homework. The more you know the statistics. So when people tell me, hey, man, that I am Academy thing, I read an article. It says that it's a scam. I said, I come with the facts. This is a U.S. company. It's been in business for seven years. All the leaders are required to pay their tax. So the U.S. government knows what's happening. The company is registered here in the United States. We do all U.S. banking. All the commissions are paid from U.S. accounts. We've had, we have communication with the CFTC, FTC. So honestly, if it was an illegal business, we would have already been shut down and the leaders would be in jail. And then they're like, oh, wow. Okay, cool. That makes sense. Got it. I just thought it was one of those things. You know, and I'm like, yeah, I know it happens. I know how you feel because I have my own reservations. But doing research, you know, I realized that the company is 90% customer, right? So, you know, I'm not combating them with emotions. I know it's not a scam. I know it's not something weird. I know we don't have a weird agenda. I know we're not trying to take people's money. I say, look, it's 90% customer and it's, it's a subscription. So if you don't like the value, you just cancel your subscription and you keep it moving. But if you love it, you're going to vote to use it just like Spotify, Netflix, and Apple Music. It's month to month so the company can sustain servers, payroll, et cetera. Do your homework. If you know the statistics that 90% of the company is customers, then you're not going to have emotional conversations with prospects. Seek advice from the right people and listen to your instincts. Seek advice from the right people and listen to your instincts. Be careful where you're getting your advice from. Does that person have a motive? Does that person need you? Does that person need you? Right? Think about that. I have a friend that's in another company. And, um, you know, he, he was coming to me for advice. And uh, he was going through a really tough situation, came to me for advice. And I told him, you know, this is what I would do. This is what I see. A lot of lack of integrity here, 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 and here. He agreed with me. He was literally agreeing with me. And then he came back a day later. I said, well, how did it go? He said, man, it was amazing. We talked. I'm very happy. And I said, well, I get it. But just think that this, this person needs you, right? If you leave their income is gone, but don't forget. And I'm cool. Like you do your thing. You keep going, but be wise because the things that happened yesterday cannot be erased, right? The, the, the lack of integrity that we saw 24 hours ago has been overshadowed because that man realized that in that moment, he goes, Whoa, if I lose this guy, I'm in trouble. So think about that. Take advice from the right people and listen to your instincts. You have to trust your gut with people. You don't want everybody in your team. I promise you. If somebody has a, a, a track record of, you know, jumping around from this to that to that to this, if they have a track record of lack of consistency, then listen to your instincts and let that person prove to you their commitment. Intuition is what we know for sure without knowing for certain. 
you got to learn how to have that spiritual discernment, the ability to say, is this my gut? Is this fear? Is this faith? Is this a nudge? Is this a sign? And what it says that I really like, judge your intuition, your intuitive track record. When do you know if listening to your intuition is a good idea? So you have to ask yourself these questions. Am I an intuitive leader? I believe that Matt and I lead off of our intuition more than off of emotion. Are my hunches usually right? So when you get those gut feelings, those hunches, think about how accurate they are. Am I gifted in this area or do I know nothing? Right? So depending on the problem, or depending on the situation, depending on what's happening, you just have to assess your track record with your gut, with your decision making. All of these things are going to make you a better leader. So in turn, you can go out and lead people better, right? But before you go out and lead people better, you have to be able to lead yourself. You have to be able to create a bulletproof general, right? A general, not in the military, but you have to be a general where you are stern and you are strong for your team. And the more information you have, the better you're going to get. So with that being said, guys, I hope you had an amazing, amazing day. Great book, Reco. If you guys need something new to go through, um, let's go out and crush it. Literally, do not wait to make the second half of 2020 the best ever. It starts tomorrow. The second half of 2020 literally starts tomorrow, which means that you have to start today. I challenged our Spanish leaders earlier. We had a call. I said, you need to treat this like it's New Year's. Today's New Year's Eve, tomorrow's New Year's Day. Recreate your resolutions. Because some people only have resolutions once a year. You need resolutions once every three months. So we're about to start a new half and a new quarter. And the new half and the new quarter only happen at the same time once, which is right now. So start your day on fire. I challenge all of you to maybe do, a, maybe do three, four presentations tonight, maybe 10. Tomorrow, go out into phase one. Go out and, and, and go hit your next rank. Go out and be your market maker. Go out and, and get your list done and then spend all day tomorrow plugging people in, right? You go out and start this second half of the year on fire because what you're going to do is you're going to project yourself into 2021 on a whole different wavelength. And I would never tell you to do something that I'm not willing to do. So you know from this point all the way through till tomorrow and then for the rest of the year, it's, it's phase one. I'm going to get into this grind mode like I have nothing. And I'll see you guys there. So thank you for your time. Matt, thank you for an amazing training. And uh, mi familia, my family, over 2,000 people jumped on here on a Sunday. Let's go out. Let's make an impact. 1,000 Chairman Tens, December 31st, 2020. That's the focus. We got a lot of work to do. Let's get it.